Hi everyone, Euro 2024 in Germany starts today and I am quite hyped to be honest. Let's try to find out if we can predict the games of the Euro 2024 completely from group stage to the winner of the whole cup. You can use this just as entertainment and watch the predictions or you can also follow along with the code. The project is quite beginner friendly and introduces you to the world of classical machine learning with structured data. We have a data set with all national matches since like 150 years and train our own classifier model and go through all steps required to do so. Data preprocessing, encoding, splitting in different sets, train a classifier and also then predict the matches. All that is done in this small project. Small disclaimer here, don't use this model to make real bets. This is just for entertainment purposes, of course. Okay, before we're gonna have a look at the code, we're gonna have a look at the results.csv file. So here we can see we've got a lot of different international matches which go back to the 19th century. The variables are date, home team, away team, the home score, the away score, tournament, city, country, and if it was played on a neutral place. So this is very important to make our predictions because we don't want to uh, predict the actual score, but we want to predict if a team is winning, losing, or making a draw. So that's what we're interested in. And we can calculate that from these two values. So. The first step is to create or uh, install some packages, which is scikit-learn, scikit-learn, and pandas. Pandas is for data preprocessing, and scikit-learn is for creating our own machine learning model and making our predictions. So we're gonna install that. This may take a few seconds. I already installed it, so I don't need to do it. So I start directly with the code. You can get it also from the link into this in the description. And what we're going to do is we use the read CSV method from pandas, which was imported as an alias here. We import that and we load it into memory. That's quite fast. And now we can perform preprocessing. What we're going to do here is we check for the data type. And if the data type is of type object, that means it's a string here. So that's an object that's of type object that and that, we're gonna all make that lowercase so that makes it easier to work with. We assign that back to the original variable. We're also gonna use to datetime from pandas to create a real date variable from the date uh, column. So this is just a string, but we're gonna convert it to a datetime because we want to filter and we only want to train our model with matches that were played after 2010, because it doesn't make really, really make sense to predict matches with players that already retired. So I think that's fine. We could even go a little bit higher, like 2050 or so. And then we're gonna make some feature engineering. So we can see that we've got a score, the home score and the away score. And we can create the new variable home win. So if it's one zero, it's a home win. If it's zero, zero, it's a draw and so on and so on. So we're gonna create the match outcome variable. So this is what we're gonna predict. We want to predict the match outcome and not the score. So let's assign that and also see how many times teams win. As we can see that we've got, yeah, like twice as many home wins as away wins or draws. So that's what you probably would expect, um, home wins. Uh, home teams are normally a little bit favorite in comparison to when they play away in another stadium. And yeah, the next step is to create dummy variables. So why do we need dummy variables? So we're gonna create dummy variables from home team and away team. So we've got strings here, the home team and the away team, home team and away team. And a machine learning model does not know how to deal with strings. So we have categories here, so every country is a category, and we have to create zeros and ones for that. So how does that work? Let's create, or let's see this very easy example. So we've got three colors, green, blue, and red. These are just represented in one column, like the teams, and we can represent it in another way. So we can split that into three columns. So we've got a red column, a blue column, and a green column. And on the left, you can see there is the column color. Let's say there's red, then color red gets a one, color green gets a zero, and color blue gets a zero two. So this is how it works. So we've got only zeros and ones. And in the code, you can see that we've got this drop first argument. 
And this is used because we don't want to create an overfit in our data set. This can happen is, and it's a very common beginner mistake in machine learning when you don't drop the first variables because the other two actually explain the first column. So let's see how that looks like. And as we can see, we've got 609 columns. Here we've got always a true and a false. So true and false is the same like zero and one. And now we're gonna drop some columns from our data set, which is date, home score, away score, tournament, city, and country. These are just strings. These are represented in our dummy variables and match outcome is the variable we want to predict. So this is also dropped from our data set, which should explain that. So with X, we want to explain Y. And currently Y looks like this. So home win, away win, and draw. So we can use the map method and actually convert home win to a one, draw to a zero, and away win to a minus one. And then we're gonna create a test set and a training data set. So we're gonna create a test set with 0.3. So 30% of our data set is used for testing and 70% is used for training. And so we can use or can split that into four data sets, X train, X test, Y train, and Y test. Okay, then we create a random forest classifier. And yeah, that's our tree based model, which we're going to use to predict our, uh, our scores or our teams. And first, we're going to fit the model. So we use X train, and we're going to use Y train. So we use these variables to train the model to predict that. And then after that, we're going to predict X test. So we can after that see how the model performs. So let's see how well that works. So we've got a home win, we've got a draw and a way win. So at the, our baseline for the prediction is 33%. So if we are better, that's already quite a good result. Yeah, we can see 51%. So we are 18% better than the base model, which is just guessing where we've got 33%. So not too great, but also not too bad, to be honest. Okay, now we can use that model to predict our groups. So we've got group A with Germany, Hungary, Scotland, Switzerland, and so on and so on. So we've got six groups in the Euro 2024. So let's create our group stage. And then we've got here a list of teams. And how can we now create our matches? We can use the combinations um, method of the ITER tools library. So of course we want to create all the, the matches, Germany with Hungary, Germany with Scotland, Scotland versus Hungary, and so on and so on. So that's a very helpful method to do so. So we're gonna create a combination for home team and away team, and we're gonna assign that to a data frame. And then we're gonna loop over all of the matches, and then we're gonna predict each of the match. And if the prediction is a one, so that's a home win, we're gonna assign the home team plus three. And if the prediction is minus one, we're gonna assign the away team plus three. And if it's a draw, we're gonna assign both teams one point. And then after that, we're gonna sort the final result and we can see how the teams performed in the group stage. So let's now run that. So we're gonna calculate that here. So we're gonna run the simulate group matches function. We pass in the group teams, we pass in the model and we pass in the required columns. So let's see, this is the result. As we can see in group A, Switzerland wins. After that, Germany on second place. Spain wins group B. After that, Italy, Denmark, England, France, Netherlands, Belgium, Slovak uh, Slovakia, and group F, Turkey and Portugal. I think the predictions are not too far off from what I would expect, to be honest. Okay, so we know our group winners. We know second place and third place. And there is something very specific in the Euro 2024, it's that we've got 24 teams, but for the round of 16, we've got, yeah, like 24 minus 16. So we've got a lot of third places uh, in the next round. And to be honest, I don't know exactly how that's calculated, but we also need to predict the yellow cards and scores to actually do that. So we have to make a little bit of a mistake here, let's say so. Um, we use the first two teams and then I'm gonna draw random third 
uh, teams here to uh, create the final matches for the uh, round of 16. But yeah, that's how it is because we don't predict the yellow cards and everything which is considered and uh, which of the third places actually goes through to the round of 16. Quite difficult to be honest. Okay, so it took me a few minutes, but now I've got the matches for round of 16. Spain versus Poland, Switzerland versus England, Turkey versus Hungary, Netherlands, Slovakia, Belgium, Croatia, France, Portugal, quite strong, Denmark, Czech Republic, and Germany, Italy. So let's see how that goes. And yeah, now we have to simulate the knockout match. And yeah, this... Um, works a little bit different because we cannot have a draw at the end in a knockout match. So we're gonna use the predict probabilities function. So we're gonna see if we've got a draw, then we're gonna compare the probability for a win for the home team. And we're also gonna predict the probability for the away team. And we now compare the probabilities. So normally these differ, even if it's a draw. So we're gonna take the higher probability and let that team pass to the next round. So, okay, so let's predict that. We simulate the knockout matches. And here we can see Spain versus Poland, winner is Spain. Switzerland versus England, winner is England. Turkey versus Hungary, winner is Hungary. Netherlands, Slovakia, Netherlands. Uh, Belgium versus Croatia, Belgium. France, Portugal, France. Denmark, Czech Republic, Denmark. And Germany, Italy is Germany. Yeah, that would be awesome, to be honest. I would be quite quite um, impressed by that. Okay, after that we can predict the next matches. So round of eight, we're gonna also predict that. Here we've got winner England, Netherlands England. Then we've got France, Belgium, which, which makes the winner France. Denmark versus Germany, winner is Denmark. And Hungary versus Spain, the winner is Spain. So last match here, or semifinals, better said. We've got England versus France, winner France, Spain versus Denmark, winner Spain. And the final is France versus Spain. And the winner is Spain in the final. Okay, that's it. So our model predicts that Spain wins the Euro 2024. To be honest, I think a little flaw in that model is that the home team is in advance. And to be honest, there is no home team because it's of course played in a neutral place. So the team here is favored just by the position in the bracket, but it does not reflect that advantage on the field. So I think that's a, yeah, a little bit of a flaw in our model, but I think to be honest, it's only a fun project and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked that, then leave me a like, leave me a comment and what you think about the model. You can also play around with it and we see you in the next video. Bye bye.